What's going on? It's Jason Heath, and we're doing a quick update, hopefully quick anyway, about Leatherwood Bespoke Base Rosin. Now, I did a complete review of this rosin back in the fall. I'll link up to that up top so you can check that out. But Andrew Baker, the rosin maker, recently updated the base line, the amber range it's called. And so I've got my old set here. I just got the new set here. I thought I'd do a quick unboxing of this, break out the base, break out the bow and see what's different. Okay, so the old rosin came in five different variants from I think 30 to 60%, if I remember right, in terms of stickiness or humidity level or what exactly the metric is, I can't remember. Apparently, these were drying out on people a little bit fast. If I remember, I was talking to Andrew about them. So if we open this up, this is about a year old and I've really just kept it in these cases. Oh, that's right. Okay, so it's actually 20%, 30%, 40%, 50%, 60%. percent That's what it is. There are five variants. So we got the 20% here. This is the driest and you can see that it uh, there's no real give at all to this rosin. Still looks like it's in pretty good shape, actually. And then we got the 30%. So that is also uh, dry, no give. Looks to be pretty good after a year. We've got the 40% which is right here. And apparently this silicon case, I believe this is silicon, there was some there was some problem with it dusting on the surface. Uh, that's what I heard from Andrew anyway. I didn't really have any problem using it, uh, but I bounce around between different rosin brands. I've been using Weed Off recently. By the way, I did a video about that a couple years ago. Maybe I'll link up to that up top too if you want to check that out. That's a great rosin. It's a premium rosin. This is a premium rosin. And premium rosins for base tend to come in around let's say $30 US, maybe a bit more uh, for a cake of rosin, which seems expensive, but I do think you get what you pay for in the rosin department. Although I'll tell you, I've used pops for years and years, which I think you can pick up for 10 bucks, 15 bucks or something. I'll link to that in the description below, along with some other rosins if you want to check them out. Carlson, Nyman's, Colstein, all kinds of good options for base. Those are the ones that I've typically used in my life. And now this Leatherwood Bespoke, I, I've been a fan of this for sure. Then we have the 50%, which is the one that's gotten the most use. And it definitely has uh, changed color a little bit. You can sort of see how that looks. Um, yeah, it's just sort of uh, gotten a little bit, yeah, a little bit discolored. And I did try this on my bow recently and it did feel a little bit slippery, which kind of makes me nervous. Um, but there's so many factors that can contribute to that. I live in San Francisco and we're getting warm here in June. So I tend to shy away from the sticky rosins at this time of year. Um, and then the one that I have really uh, been careful with, the 60%, you can see how pliable this one is. And again, this is all the old stuff. And I do see that for the 60, especially, we're getting definitely some sort of uh, dusting on the rosin. So let's open up this new rosin. And I love how this comes in these cool containers. Uh, you know, even the shipping labels. The violin rosin uh, is is really cool. It comes in this leather uh, pouch, all very handmade feeling. And so let's check out what we got here. So we've got, just like before, we've got the amber range right here. So this is the information about uh, what's, what's contained right here. So this pack has 20 and 30%. And they come in these little bags right here, which I think are quite cool. So you can open up the bag. And we've got similar cases, 30% right here and 20% right here. Okay, so we'll put those out. 20, 30, open up the next pouch. Okay, and then we got another amber range right here. I like all this information. And again, the other video I did has all the details about this. But in this one, we've got the 40, 50, and 60. So Andrew sent me all of them to check out. If you order them, you get two typically. And I think it's 80 Australian dollars. Uh, last time I checked, I believe that's what it is for two, which seems expensive, but that does come in around 30 to 
$35 US, um, which is in line with other premium rosin brands for sure. This is coming from Australia, just outside of Sydney. Now we have the 40% and we got the 50% and the 60%. Okay, so I'm going to just get these all lined up so we can see how they look similar and different. Okay, so now let's open these up. So we got the new 20. We got the new 30. Okay, we got the new 40. Ooh, those got a little sticky on that one. We got the new 50. Oh, this is my this is my bread and butter rosin. This is the closest to the other soft rosins I typically use for orchestra playing, like uh, these days Weed Off, um, uh, uh, Carlson, those kind of sticky resins. And the 60, wow, the 60 looks substantially different. So you'll notice, I'll just put them all right here, and you'll notice that the the powdering that we're getting on this old 60 looks looks very different from this new 60. So that's a look at the rosins, and they're quite beautiful, but let's definitely see how they perform on the bass. Okay, let's check this out at the bass, and I have two bows. They're the same bows that I tried out last time. They're my Baron Doling, which is my main bow, uh, and both of them have recent rehairs, by the way, since we're nerding out. Let's just fully nerd out from uh, Brian Campbell, wonderful uh, bow rehair person here in San Francisco, and this is chestnut hair on both of these. So we got chestnut on this doling bow, gold mounted, nice bow. And then we've got the finale bow, which is about $200 maybe or something like that. The doling is well into the thousands, um, 4,000 maybe or something like that. This is about 200, uh, just so you can hear how these rosins perform. And I got this from Steve Kosika of the String Emporium. So shout out to Steve. Let's go through these rosins and I'm gonna go from the 20 to I guess I dare try the 60. I'm only gonna use the new stuff. And uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. So I'm gonna start with the finale bow and we'll put some 20% on. So get this, and again, this is going to be the driest. This is going to be probably the best for solo playing. And so let's see. Yeah, and this is just like I remember it. This is what I love about this rosin is that it, I, I generally don't like drier rosins like this, but these 20, 30%, I remember this from before, and this is true with this also, they have a nice uh, bite. They have like a quick response, and they have more body to the sound than I would expect. In fact, I could probably play this rosin. Yeah, you know, it doesn't displace the string as much as when I have a stickier rosin on, but especially for the upper register. And it really has a nice, there's a there's there's the attack of the note that rosin has an influence on, and then there's the sustain of the note that rosin also has an influence on, and people look for different things. Some rosin kind of, they you can almost hear it in the body of the note. Some of it, it really provides a, an attack up front. I mean, this is nerdy stuff, folks. If the, the world of bass rosin, it's not as expensive as the world of bass strings, but oh boy, you can go down some rabbit holes. So welcome to the rabbit hole. Okay, so that's the 20% with the finale bow. Let's put a little bit on and I have intentionally not rosin the last few days. Also, I'm filming this in early June in San Francisco, so it's about 72 degrees right now. So your mileage may vary, but this type of weather here in in San Francisco, it's probably going to uh, perform a little better with these these lighter rosins. I'm going to be very sparing with the sticky rosins. So here's the Baron Doling with the 20%. rosin, this 30%, and we've got this kind of cool uh, bubble in the rosin. I don't know exactly what forms that, but interesting. Okay, so I'm getting this out of the container. And for this rosin, I find that it's easiest to just sort of pull it out a little bit, kind of perch it, perch it, is that the word? Like this, and then just put a little bit on. So we're going to start, whoa, we got some chunkage on this rosin here. So you can see we got a little bit of uh, action going on in that rosin. So let's uh, try this out. Yeah, there's a little more stick. And I'm noticing. 
that there's a little bit more low end grab to that rosin. So let's also put that on the doling. See what we've got here. And again, in a perfect world, I would probably have five different bows here that had all been reheard at the same exact time. And uh, I would be trying these so you, so you could hear the difference even more precisely, but this will have to do for today. Um, a little bit more stick to that one, just a little bit more stick. Okay, so let's move on to the 30%, which is interesting because this is the one that has a little bit of a different color. It's got a little bit more of a purple hue to it. It's actually quite pretty. Um, and then I'm getting this out. And these are a little tougher to get out of the case. They're not tough to get out of the case, but they're a little tougher. Um, and I'm guessing that might be because the silicone is slightly different on this on this new one. And again, there's there, you can see there's no powder on this, right? There's a little bit of coloring on the surface, but I'm guessing that's just as the rosin cools in the case. There's there's no uh, no powdering, and you can see the 30% from a year ago. We got some significant powdering. So here versus here. Okay, so this is what I'm using: the no powder, the new stuff. And we'll see, do we get a little bit of chunks flying up on this one? Nah, it's a little bit more smooth going on. And again, uh, don't touch the hair of the bow like I'm doing, but I'm doing it. <laughs> okay, so let's try this. Try it on the doling, and again, do as I say, not as I do, but I'm just trying to work some of this rosin out. Just being sparing so I don't get too rosin up by the end. So here's, again, this is the middle of the road right now. This is the, oh, am I saying that wrong? Oh yeah, I think I, got, I did 20 and 30. This is the 40%. If I said 30, I apologize. This is the 40% right now that I'm, I'm using. <laughs> It's a nice grab on those low notes. And this, and now here's where the doling really, really is, is favorable. In terms of like grabbing the string, it really excels. And this rosin, I really like the, the body of the sound. There's a nice articulation. This reminds me a little bit of pops in terms of the sticky articulation, which I love, love pops, I've used it forever. Um, initial impressions, feels like pops, attacks like pops, and this is the 40%. I had been using the 50%, and even in the summer I'd been using the 50% last year. Now I'm using the 40%, and right now I'm really digging this rosin. It feels like pops, but with a cleaner sound after you get the string going. <laughs> Now, uh, you can see on the second camera, I'm getting quite a bit of rosin on my string, so I'm gonna go get my rag. All right, bass rag. And so I'm gonna clean these strings off. And I honestly, I forgot to check to see what kind of buildup I had on my strings before I started filming this video. Some of that might've been from yesterday. Uh, let's, let's see, let's try one more. Powdering, uh, not much, not much powdering on these. Really, really impressed with that 40%. Okay, I'm gonna move on, but I, I kinda don't want to. I kinda just wanna rock out that 40%. Uh, so we'll go back to the finale bow, and we're gonna try 50%, which this was my jam last year, and again, Working it out of the, oh wow. Okay, so even just working this rosin out 
I'll see if you can see that on the camera. I actually bent the rosin a little bit. It's like a, it's like a, it's like a Snickers bar on a hot day or something. I, uh, <laughs> um, this stuff is malleable, okay? We're getting into Play-Doh territory a little bit here and the temperature might have something to do with it. I'll bet this is an awesome winter rosin. If you live in a colder climate, um, I'm going to be very sparing with yeah, and there's stickiness. This has got stickiness. Uh, you can see right there, I took a, that's two wipes of rosin and I took a good chunk out and I can see chunkage on the bow. So you see all that? Uh, that's cool. I like that. This is like some, this is like some heavy duty, like some uh, for, fortissimo orchestra low playing rosin. Oh yeah. Okay. Right now, if I was going to order this, if, if I would, and I was gonna get two cakes, which is what you do, I would definitely get the 40% and the 50%. And I think you're gonna be set. Cause that 40 right now is like slightly warm weather. That's rocking. This stuff is not sticking on me. Like I was kind of worried. You can get into a bad situation, and I'll try this on the doling too. You can get into a bad situation with sticky rosin where uh, you can almost turn your bow into glue. I've had that happen back when I was living in Chicago playing summer concerts. Sometimes you just have to nuke and pave and get a whole new rehair. So I don't think this is the case with this 50%. Ooh. Yeah, this is. This. Pretty good. <laughs> oh wow. Okay, this is I, I, what I said about the forty percent. All true for the fifty percent, but I'm really liking this fifty percent. This is. I'm still. enjoying the articulation that's coming off of this and I'm really enjoying the sustain of the sound but I'm not getting that angry uh, swarm of bees sound that you can get sometimes with stickier rosin so I'm very very happy with this and now what I'm gonna do with the 60% which is what I did last time I looked at the 60% is I'm going to just put it on the finale bow again this isn't my main bow and I just, I, I'm always worried about this really sticky rosin. Wow, okay. <laughs> I'm trying to get it out of the case and all I'm doing is bending the rosin, okay? So I now have a, uh, I, oh, wow, okay, oh, oh, goodness. Okay, so that's what the 60% looks like after my manhandling. Okay, so just the slightest, Oh, I hope that's not too much. Oh, do I do a second stroke? No way. That would be that would be foolish. Okay, so this is probably best suited for people who do uh, gut string playing. This kind of rosin, uh, from what I understand, talking to people works really well in that situation. Yeah, this is the first rosin. I I have lost that punch at this point. Again, playing steel strings, I'm playing Diderot Kaplan's right now, playing modern setup, uh, and on a warm-ish day. So, okay, still grabbing. But this is the one rosin I found that I think might need a little babysitting. And you know what I mean <laughs> if, you, if, you're, uh, if you're deep into this stuff like I am. So, uh, I would have no trouble heading out on a gig, even in the summer, probably with the 50%. I would maybe use the 60% in the winter if I was living in New York or Chicago. I would definitely use it if I was playing gut strings, I imagine. I don't really do a lot of that type of playing. Um, yeah, I, if you play more solo music, 
probably the 30 to 40 percent is gonna but you still play in ensembles uh the, which is probably most people uh the 30 to 40 percent is really gonna work well if you really like your rosin uh dry and you're not looking to get those those uh uh chunky fat notes uh, like that orchestra section players are getting, then maybe the 20 and 30% would work for you. Um, I think for a lot of players that do the kind of playing I do, which is more orchestral based, or playing in bass sections and that kind of thing, I think you're really gonna enjoy the 40 or 50%. And then uh, if you live somewhere real cold and dry, or you wanna take a chance, that 60% might be your jam. These all are very high quality rosins in my opinion. I liked this stuff a year ago. I'm really liking what I'm seeing. I will, uh, report back if there are any other things that I see happening in terms of dusting or anything like that. But I remember talking to Andrew Baker, the rosin maker, a few months ago about uh, some of the the changes he'd done to the formula, and and the they seem to be working great. So. Two thumbs up for this rosin, definitely uh, check it out. I'll link up to the website in the description below and we'll see you in the next video.